Times are definitely tough in Vancouver right now. The Canucks coming off a humiliating 7-1 loss to the Colorado Avalanche on Thursday night. This is Instant Analysis presented by Tylenol Rapid Release. Gel caps, rapid release for rapid relief. Now, here to help us break down what's going wrong, we have Randy Janda. Now, Bo Horvat said the loss was embarrassing. You used the gif from the office of washing their eyeballs out. I think both really get the message across that it was not a good night for Vancouver. I mean, what is going wrong right now with the Canucks? In a word, identity. This team does not have an identity. When you watch them play from night to night, you're wondering, okay, what are they? Are they a run and gun team? Travis Green has said, nope, we're not a run and gun team. Are they a lock it down defensively team? When you give up seven goals, and you've seen what they've done through 14 games. They're definitely not that either. So, you know, you ask the players and they say, we're a team that works hard defensively and turns that into offense, but there hasn't been any offense. And when you look at that top nine with the Vancouver Canucks, the additions of Connor Garland, the step that Elias Pettersson supposed to be taking and other players in that top nine, there should be more offense. But as of right now, this team is a, a team that relies on goaltending and Thatcher Demko to play really well and even if he has a mediocre game, there's not any run support there. So to me, the big word in Vancouver right now is identity. What is the identity of this team? What is their makeup? Because nobody can figure it out. On a game-to-game -game basis, they keep you guessing. Now, I think when you mention the word identity, a lot of people would say that comes down to the coach. It's up for him to set the tone for his lineup. Now, Travis Green was asked after the game last night if the team is still hearing his message. He quickly answered that, yes, they're still listening, but we know that, you know, coaches can be shown the door if it looks like teams have started to tune them out. Do you think that's what's happening right now with Travis Green? Well, normally after 14 games, you'd probably say, all right, cool it. You know, coach talk is a little too early, but Vancouver is a little different this year. And the reason I say that is we kind of saw similar things last year. And, you know, previously in, it was a COVID year. There was a lot of things going on with the organization Ownership mentioned that they didn't spend to the limit because there was issues in the COVID economy. But you saw those tendencies from the team where they had a really long dry spell. And there was a number of things that went wrong for this, this team. But now you fast forward a year, 14 games in, two of these games, the Colorado game and early on against Buffalo, effort was a question. Commitment was a question. And the more you see that, that does raise the question a little bit more of, Okay, is the message being lost on these guys? Have they heard it maybe too much? Is it potentially time to mix it up? Normally, after 14 games, I wouldn't say coaching, you look at it this early, but Vancouver is different this year because of going all in with Oliver Ekman Larson, Connor Garland. You trade away draft picks and back to back years, first round draft picks. There is an expectation to make the playoffs. Travis Green has said it, Jim Benning has said it. And most importantly, when it comes to the organization, the owner, Francesco Aquilini, has said it. So, I, you know, it's, it's a very interesting situation in Vancouver. Other teams, I'd say you probably don't look at the coach this early in Vancouver. It's a very, very real discussion. All right. Well, you're painting a bit of a dark picture here, but I like to be an optimist when sure. things aren't going so well. So if the Vancouver Canucks are to turn this around, who leads the turnaround? It has to be Elias Pettersson. Elias Pettersson is the player that you do commit money to nearly seven and a half million dollars. And he hasn't been himself. If you look at his, you know, his burst, it's not quite there. The confidence is not there. He's not shooting as much as we've seen in the past. His five on five game hasn't been there. So this is a team that if you look at that forward group, it, it's a pretty stacked forward group, right? The top two lines should have some offense in them, especially that lotto line with Brock Besser, JT Miller, and Elias Pettersson. So I think Thatcher Demko is going to keep this team in games that maybe they might not deserve to be in some games because he's just a top five goalie, I believe, in the NHL right now. And we've seen a couple of saves of the year candidates. But if this team is going to thrive, not just survive, if they're going to thrive and they're going to be in the playoff race, Elias Patterson has to be back to being the old Elias Patterson, which is picking up points. But most importantly, also just being a good 200-foot player. Against Colorado, we saw a brutal giveaway that led to a goal. He's got to cut that out of his game. So Elias Patterson is the answer to that. All those other players are going to play a key role but you need your star to be a star. And at least Canucks fans can take comfort in the fact that if their team is disappointing them, your Twitter account does not. It always brings the entertainment. <laughs> Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. I'll try my best on that front. <laughs>